Our first major AMD video for the week showcased an X470 motherboard from Gigabyte with the AM4 socket, of course, just with an updated chipset and some changes post Ryzen launch. So as the motherboard vendors have been ironing out their side of Ryzen, AMD 2 has been working on their next iteration of Ryzen, the Ryzen 2, or as it's been called sometimes, Ryzen Plus family of CPUs, which will exist on the Zen architecture, not Zen 2, but a Zen architecture. And uh, also there's news on Raven Ridge, the APU integration of the Zen or Ryzen core complexes and the Vega GPU. So we'll be talking about that briefly today. Before that, this coverage is brought to you by Thermaltake and the Flow Liquid Cooler. The Flow is a 360 millimeter radiator with three RIN RGB LED fans. You can program the fans for custom lighting through software and then of course benefit from the larger radiator size and cooling performance. Learn more at the link in the description below. This one's gonna be a quick one for us. We didn't go to the AMD Tech Day, but we collected the information separately. Most of our early efforts were focused on the X470 motherboard, which is one of the first one that's been shown officially. And you can find that at, on our channel by Gigabyte. So the main information here, especially as it pertains to Raven Ridge and the APUs, is that the architecture, as expected, is focused on power savings. This is something AMD has been big on with Ryzen and the Zen architecture in general and they've had some trouble with it with Vega. But combining the two is a bit different than just Vega standalone on the big DGPU PCB. So combining them, Vega and Ryzen, as expected, will communicate via AMD's high-speed interconnect, which they call Infinity Fabric, and uh, that also bridges to them the system I.O. via the chipset and the integrated memory controller, the IMC. So all these things are bridged together via Infinity Fabric. And uh, then the other kind of major changes there are uh, pertaining to Precision Boost 2, which is what AMD is calling its updated version of its boost technology for Zen. So the boost technology primarily has hinged on the things you would expect. How much current is going to the CPU? On the GPU side, you're looking at current, voltage, power consumption, and thermals. And a lot of the same stuff is true for the CPUs. So you're looking at these elements for Precision Boost 2 with the addition of implementing a new volt frequency curve where uh, unlike with Zen 1, where you had very hard to set frequencies for core utilization, you use one core versus two versus all of them, there's a, a very defined, almost binary toggle between the frequencies. Unlike that, now it's a more gradual uh, gradient for the frequencies versus the core utilization and the voltage. So that's a big change. They have charts for that where you can see it's, it's kind of a, as you increase core count, it kind of asymptotes out at the bottom. So that's different and it, it somewhat mirrors what Intel has been doing. Not to say that AMD and Intel are copying one another, but that this is clearly one of the more optimal ways to uh, configure your core frequencies versus your power consumption. Another item here is that AMD is looking at which thread is under the most demand. So the thread under the most active load is the one that will get the most power sent to it or the most current sent to it. So they are modulating based on that, not just based on a, uh, a hard lookup table or something like that. Further, the power between the CPU and the GPU package are allocated based upon the current requirements of the applications running. So AMD is using Firestrike as an example here on one of their presentation slides, which makes a great example because Firestrike, uh, for 3 Mark Firestrike, it has a few tests. It's got graphics tests and physics tests. Physics uses almost zero graphics compute and graphics uses very little CPU. So between the two, you can see the power allocation go up for the Vega component, the graphics component during the graphics test. You see the allocation go up for the CPU component during the physics test, which means that they're able to min-max their power and current budget because you can't just push all of it through to both components. They don't have the budget for it. So you pick and choose to fit the smaller uh, thermal and power consumption limitations of these Raven Ridge chips. And that's what they're doing here. And they're able to uh, dynamically regulate where the power and the current is going based on the load of the CPU at that time, or the GPU as it were. 
AMD, unfortunately, some of their slides aren't all that helpful. They are employing the bigger bar better mentality for them, where you've got a Y axis with no label. Well, they have a label, but no numbers. An X axis with no numbers. So it's just sort of nebulous, infinitely going in each direction with no actual understanding of what it means, uh, which is very unfortunate because it's an interesting slide otherwise. But this is something we'll look at more in testing later on. Just like we talked about when Ryzen launched, AMD is still using LDOs or low dropout regulators for their power management. And uh, the LDOs here double as power gates. So they can turn things on and off uh, based on the current needs of the system. This goes to the extreme of being able to disable 95% of the GPU if it's not needed, which of course is really important for any kind of mobile chip because you care a lot about battery life. And if you have a GPU sitting there burning power waiting to be used, you're just burning battery life. So they can uh, power gate down to 95% of it off and uh, they can further power gate with GPU uncore. So all of the uncore components, things like cache would be mitigated in their consumption as well and save more power. Uh, power gating for SOC functions is split into two containers. So they have a good slide for this one where uh, the containers are the, there's, they label them A and B. One of them contains the CPU interface, the GPU interface and the IO hub. That would be all in one. And the other one contains the multimedia hub and the memory controller in a second container. And then these can be gated based on which region or container they are in based on the load of the system to reduce power consumption further. Uh, and all of this allows a 99% residency on a Windows idle screen static. So they're able to, to use very little power and just sit there idle and have a long standby life basically on the, the laptops. Now we haven't tested this. These are all claims in the marketing slides, but some of this stuff's already out there. Some of the Ryzen 7 2700U and the 2500U components have been out for a little while now. There are more coming forward. There's the, well, there's a couple things interesting. Uh, the R3s, 2300U, the 2200U are both coming out. Those are 3.4 gigahertz boost and uh, 2.0 gigahertz for 2300U and 2.5 for the 2200U. They are 2300U is four core, four thread with six compute units. And that would be 64 times six for the streaming processors. Three compute units for the 2200U, two core, four threads on that one. Other than these, the roadmap has been laid out as well for, uh, for the future for AMD, including a card that will compete with NVIDIA in the deep learning and machine learning space. So that will be a new Vega GPU on seven nanometer process. The immediate roadmap, however, lists a Ryzen 3 mobile APU for January 9th, AKA now, the Ryzen desktop APUs for February 12th, and second gen Ryzen desktop processors in April, which we already knew from our earlier coverage, Ryzen Pro Mobile quarter two, and second gen Threadripper, a lot of you were interested in, that's second half 2018, second gen Ryzen Pro, second half 2018. Uh, other smaller items here included the launch of the 400 series, we already covered that. Uh, there have been some changes to overclocking. Some of the motherboard vendors have told us directly that they are focusing on better enabling P-state overclocking. Not necessarily that useful, but uh, definitely an enthusiast thing that helps. And then they have some CPU cooler updates and a reduction, permanent reduction in pricing for Ryzen desktop CPUs going forward for the ones that are out now. So that's what we have for you. Just a, a kind of quick recap of the AMD news as we've seen it. You can find some uh, more unique coverage in our Gigabyte X470 motherboard analysis, I suppose, show floor analysis news video. If you're interested, subscribe for more CES coverage as always. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, and I'll see you all next time.